Do you want to make your character ride a horse-like creature? Well, here's how. For this tutorial, you will need these things. A rigged character, a rigged four-legged creature, animation layers add-on, and wiggle to add-on. Animation layers is a paid add-on, and you could create this without it, but it's much easier with it. I'll explain later. First, import your creature and character into the same scene. To do this, have your creature blend file open. If your character is a .blend file, then you can import it using file, append. Locate the blender file, open the collection folder, and double-click on the collection the character is in. If your character is a .fbx file, you can import it using file, import, fbx. Now, position the character's armature so their butt is on the seat. With the character's armature selected, go into pose mode and turn on auto keying. Now, select the character's thighs, rotate them up by pressing RX and rotate them out a bit with RZ. Do the same with the arms and the forearms, but position them like they're holding the reins of a horse. Now, make sure you have the Wiggle 2 add-on installed. To do this, download it from the GitHub link in the description and unzip it. Then, go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, Install from Disk. Open the folder and double-click on the Wiggle 2 Python file. Now, select the lower legs and feet bones and in the Animation tab, under Wiggle 2, enable Bone Tail. Set the stiffness of the legs to 10 and the stiffness of the feet to 100. You can adjust these values to personal taste. Now let's work on the creature's walk cycle. Go into Object Mode and select the creature's armature. Hopefully, you already have the legs IK set up. If not, here's how I did it for this creature. Go into Edit Mode and select these four joints. Extrude it back using E and Y on the keyboard. Select these new bones and press Alt-P to clear parent. Name each one so you can search for them easier. Now go into Pose Mode. Select the leg bone above the IK bone and press Shift-I to add IK without targets. Go into Bone Constraints Properties and change the chain length to three or however many bones your creature's leg has. Now click the eyedropper tool and add the armature as the target and select the correct IK bone for that leg. Finally, go into Bone Properties, select the foot bone below it, and uncheck Inherit Rotation so the foot always points towards the ground. Now, repeat that process for the other legs. Okay, back to the walk cycle. First, you should be in pose mode and make sure you're on frame zero. Select these two alternate IK bones and move them forward a little bit and press I to insert a keyframe. Select the other two IK bones and move them back a bit and press I. Go to frame 20 and move the first two IK bones back so they line up with the other two and press I again. Select the other two bones again and move them forward a bit and press I. Now, if you scrub the timeline, it should look sort of like a shuffle dance. After that, select all four IK bones, select the keyframes on frame zero, copy them and paste them onto frame 40. Now we need to raise the foot up as it moves forward. So go to frame 10 and select these two bones and raise them up just a bit and press I. Go to frame 30 and repeat that to the other two bones. Now we will make it loop. Go to frame 0, select all four IK bones and open up the graph editor. With your mouse in this area, press A to make sure everything is selected. Press Ctrl, Shift M and add a cycles modifier. Now press play to watch him walk for the rest of eternity. When you finally reach the end of eternity, we will move on to the next part of the tutorial. Now, we will give him a bit more life by adding some noise and more body movement. First, select the pelvis bone and make sure you're in the timeline and go to frame zero. Turn on auto keying and move it down just enough to add a keyframe. Go to frame 10 and move it down to about here. Now, copy frame 0 and paste it on frame 20 and go back into the graph editor. Select all and add another cycles modifier. In the item tab, hover the rotation and press I to insert a keyframe. Now, click this drop down and select the X rotation. Press N to open the side panel 
and add a noise modifier. Turn the strength to 0.1 and the scale to negative 15. Click this button to copy the modifier and paste it on to the other two rotations with this button. On the Y and Z rotation, make sure to change the phase so they aren't the same exact movement. Now, to attach the character to the creature. Go back into Object Mode. Select your character's root object and go into Object Constraints and add a Child of. Select the creature's armature as the target and the hips as the bone. Press Set Inverse to fix his position and he will be connected to your four-legged creature. Now, we need to make him walk forward in the scene. This is where having the animation layers add-on can be helpful, but you can easily not use it for this tutorial. Once you have the add-on installed, select the creature's armature. Go to the Animation tab and enable Turn Animation Layers On. Click the plus and double-click Base Layer and rename it to Walk Cycle and rename Anim Layer to Walk Movement. This will keep the walk movement separate from the walk cycle animation. Go back to the timeline and on frame 0, move the creature to your starting point. Go to the last frame and move him forward a bunch. Select both keyframes, press T, and change the interpolation to linear. This will make sure the movement speed is consistent and that it doesn't start and end slower. Now hit play and check to see if the feet are sliding. If they are, then move the creature forward or back until it matches. You can also change the speed of the walk cycle if you need to instead. Do this by selecting the walk cycle animation layer and go into pose mode. Go to frame zero and select all bones, then select all keyframes. Press S to scale the keyframes as this will change the speed. Adjust it so the feet don't slide anymore. If you're still watching, we're almost to the end of the tutorial. Now we make the character's hands grab onto the reins. Model a quick handle for the rope to attach to. You can just use a cylinder if you'd like. Position it so the right hand is holding onto it. Add a child of constraint to the cylinder and attach it to the right hand bone and press set inverse. Select the character's armature and go into pose mode. Select the left hand bone and press shift I to add IK to new empty object. Make sure to change the chain length to the amount of bones the arm has. Back in object mode, click the new empty object. In object constraint properties, add a child of to this and make the target the cylinder. Now, if you move the right arm, both arms will move with the cylinder automatically. Hopefully you can see where I'm going with this. Go into pose mode and select the right upper arm and forearm and enable bone tail in the wiggle settings. Set the stiffness on the upper arm to 1000 and the forearm to 200. This will give the arm some automatic animation. Fix the rotation of the fingers to look like it's holding the cylinder correctly and we're on to the second to last step, which is the actual rope physics. Ready for this one? In object mode, press shift A, add a path curve and position it so it's centered to the back of the creature's neck. Go into Edit Mode, select All and right-click and set Spline Type to Poly. Delete the outer two vertices so it looks like this. Now position these two vertices at the sides of the cylinder that you made earlier. Now select All and right-click and subdivide it once. Move the new vertices down just a little bit. Don't go too far down because, unfortunately, this rope physics method does not work with collisions so we don't want it to clip through the creature's body. If you know how to make a rope that works with collisions, please let me know in the comments. Now select all again and subdivide four more times. Go into object mode and right click and convert to mesh. Go back into edit mode, enter vertex selection mode and select the vertex by the neck. Go into object data properties and add a vertex group. Double click it, name it hook one, Make sure the weight is set to 1 and click Assign. Now press Ctrl H and add hook to new object. Click in the empty space in the outliner to deselect the empty. Now select these two vertices, add a vertex group named Hook 2 and press Assign. Press Ctrl H to add hook to new object again. Now select all three vertices and add one last vertex group called Cloth Pin and hit Assign. 
Go back into object mode and select the rope. In the modifier tab, change the first vertex group to hook one and the second to hook two. Now add a skin modifier, select smooth shading and go back into edit mode. Select all vertices and scale them down with control A. Back in object mode, in the physics tab, add a cloth. Under shape, set pin group to cloth pin. Back in the modifier tab, move cloth above the skin modifier and add a subdivision surface modifier. I think it's time we attach the reins to the creature and the handle. To do this, select the empty near the creature's neck. In object constraints, add a child of constraint and make the target the creature's armature. Set the bone to the neck bone and press set inverse. Now, select the other empty and add a child of to that as well but set the target on this one to the cylinder. Now, if you press play, you can see that it's not exactly in the right spot. This is because we have to bake everything, which is the final step. I know, I know, we can finally take a breath and enjoy our creation after this last step. Here we go. First, select both empty objects and on the first frame, press I to insert a keyframe. For some reason, this is needed for the cloth modifier to work properly. Now, select the character's armature and go into pose mode. In the wiggle, two settings. Enable overwrite current action and press bake wiggle. Now, go into object mode, select the rope and go into the physics properties. Turn the shrinking factor to 0.5. Open the cache dropdown and press bake to finalize the rope physics. Now, the beginning of the animation looks a bit janky, so just set the start frame to when it starts to become natural looking and you're ready to render out your animation. If you got through this tutorial and made something awesome, be the first to post the link in our community on Discord. Links are in the description. And as always, if you enjoyed this tutorial, you can support the channel by hitting that like button. And don't forget to subscribe. I sincerely appreciate the gesture.